So this is a bit of a controversial topic, but I figured I'd give my two cents on this. Credit cards have been seen to many as a necessary evil, and a lot of people just think it's the devil. You shouldn't mess with it, shouldn't have anything to do with it. And there's even impactful people that are wealthy, such as Dave Ramsey, who swear against it, and they give you multiple reasons as to why you shouldn't have them. Whereas, on the other hand, there's also a bunch of influential people who are just as wealthy, if not wealthier, who say credit cards are actually, they can be a good thing. So then the question really comes, are credit cards worth it? I'm sure you've heard the millions of horror stories behind credit cards and how they can put families into loads and loads and loads of debt and how the interest rates are skyrocket high and how there's just so many things wrong with credit cards and how they're bad and how you should never touch them and how they will just destroy you financially. And to a point, a lot of those horror stories are true. But in order to really understand credit cards, we're going to need to dive into the facts about them, what makes them good, what makes them bad, are they even bad, and how you can actually leverage credit cards for financial gain. So first things first, are credit cards good or bad? I'm just going to go on a quick credit card one-on-one -on -one here. The thing that makes a credit card good or bad isn't the credit card itself. It's the person who holds the credit card. Credit cards are just another financial tool and largely they're used to borrow money. And of course, when you borrow money, you have to pay money back in the form of interest. And if you miss out on payments, you have to pay late fees. You know how it goes. So a person who's financially responsible wouldn't make mistakes with credit cards that someone who maybe isn't as responsible would make. Someone who's financially responsible, when they're applying for a credit card, because you actually do have to apply for these, they want to know what's the interest rate, what are the benefits of this, are there any rewards or cash back options, what can I get from this, what are the late fees, is there a period of time where the interest rate is zero. They're going to be looking at these things because they're going to know how to game the system and actually make credit cards work for them instead of the other way around. The irony here is the beginner credit card user isn't going to be privy to this information and they're typically not going to qualify for some of the better options out there that actually have those benefits that I just talked about. And more times than not, they're probably not going to qualify for a credit card that starts off with a 0% interest rate for the first 12 to 18 months because they haven't proven themselves yet because they don't have a credit score. So ideally, that's what they look for, the 0% interest rate. Now, after this bracing period ends of the 0% for the 12 to 18 months, then we get into the real interest rate, which typically is between 14% and 24%. And everything in between is just super high. Even at the lower end, credit cards have high interest rates. So with this, if you're wondering if credit cards are good or bad, I mean, it has cons. They have late fees, high interest rates, and they can even have annual fees just for owning their credit card, but that's how it is, and you have to come into getting a credit card knowing these things so it won't bite you later, and so you can make smart financial decisions so that you won't have to worry about making horrible financial decisions and having to pay later. But the best thing about the cons of having a credit card is you can literally avoid every single one of them. If you actually pay off your credit card debt in full before the 30 days is over, then guess what? You avoid the interest rate, you avoid the late fees, and when you go in to apply to get a credit card, you can avoid the annual fee just by getting a credit card that does not have an annual fee. Simple, right? So by comparison, when you start looking at the pros of owning a credit card, you start to see that there's a lot more pros than cons if you strategically use the credit card. One of the biggest pros to owning a credit card is that credit scores are actually pretty important to do things that you're going to want to do in the future. And there are strategic ways to do this and build your credit score without actually having to suffer from it financially. To be specific, you can qualify for better credit cards with higher limits as far as what you can spend and lower interest rates. And the same thing goes for loans. You'll qualify for loans that are much bigger in price, which have lower interest rates than if you hadn't proven that you have a high credit score. 
in order to qualify for some of these better benefits, you're actually going to need to have a 690 or above credit score. And that's just pretty average, but you're gonna to want to have that or higher to pretty much be able to get what you wanna get. And the benefit behind qualifying for you know bigger loans and better credit cards is a simple fact that now, whenever you wanna take out a loan for a house, that's what you need to keep in mind. How's my credit score looking? Because, yeah, you, they might give you a loan, but it might have a ridiculous interest rate compared to what you could get if your credit score was actually decent, i.e. 690 or above. And on top of this, you also get easier approvals whenever you're renting out an apartment or even a house. Because most landlords nowadays require you to run your credit prior to living there because they want you to prove that you don't have any issues or any potential issues going into their living space. Because if you do, why would I want somebody to move into a place that I own, but they're not reliable to pay their rent on time? It just doesn't make sense. It could put both of us in a financial situation. So it's better to have somebody come in who is financially responsible and has a track record of paying on time. You can get better car insurance rates and the list really goes on and on and on. There's so many ways you can actually benefit off of having good credit. And in order to get good credit, you kind of need to have a credit card. And I just want to go into a quick beginner strategy if you've never actually used a credit card before and you want to build your credit up, I'm going to show you how to do it the smart way. And this is just a very simple example, but it's going to put you in a position to think of other ideas to put yourself ahead financially. So what I used to do is I would go to the gas station, get some gas, and I would just swipe my credit card. And then I would pump the gas and everything. And then once, as soon as I was done pumping the gas, I would go ahead, go into my phone, and pay off the credit card right then and there. Just so I don't have to wait the 30 days and forget and then pay interest on freaking gas. You know what I mean? So that's a really good strategy. And you can do the same thing with groceries or things that you would normally buy. Just use your credit card because you have the money for the things you would normally buy anyways. And then you can go ahead and pay it off immediately and you don't have to worry about it. And then I kind of just went up and up and up on it. So I took a step up ahead each time. And then you can even do stuff like pay rent with your credit card. It can get it up pretty quick because it's larger quantities of money that you're in debt for, but you're really not in debt because you have the money anyways, but you're just using your credit card to do it right now so you can build up that credit score and get those benefits. And it's really important for me to mention the fact that I did not actually mention all the benefits for credit cards yet because there's more. There's cash back options and then there's rewards points. And typically for the better options of cash back credit cards, which are between one and 5% of the money that you spent, I rhymed, totally didn't mean to, but it rhymed, you will get that money back. And guess what? And if you do the beginner credit card strategy that I just talked about previously, then guess what? You're getting money back for spending money that you already had. So you're not losing money. You're getting money back. Does that make sense? And then you have rewards points, which are not worth a bunch monetarily, but they add up over time. And these rewards points can be redeemed for certain monetary items, such as gift cards, travel points. And honestly, you can get free flights or hugely discounted flights by using these points. They really look out for you here. It's a really, really, really good plan, especially if you're a traveler, you can get free flights. I'm just saying that's monetary value. You can get hotels free. You can get even cash back options through the rewards points. There's a bunch of benefits with credit cards that people don't typically take advantage of because they're not using them correctly because they get caught in the trap that they set in front of them, which says, hey, for the first year of you owning this credit card, there's a 0% interest rate. So even if you don't pay your stuff on time, it's 0% interest rate, so you don't have to worry about it. And then they get comfortable for that year, and then they forget about it. When that year expires, boom, debt goes through the roof. And it almost gives people the excuse and entices them to have the excuse that, well, it's at 0%, so I don't have to worry about it right now. I can just splurge and spend money on whatever I want to, which is the wrong mentality, especially when it comes to finances. And there's a bunch of people like, Graham Stephan, he gets his flights and his hotels free all the time because he leverages credit cards for monetary gain. And it's so smart because, because you qualify for 
certain things and you have your credit score at a certain level, let's say a 755 or above, you can pretty much do whatever you want at that point. But the huge thing to remember about all of this is if you don't have any financial discipline, this will not work. You're going to see a credit card as another source of income that you can just swipe, 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 swipe. It's not like cash where as soon as you give it up, you don't get it back. You get the card back every single time. The thing is, there's an app and there's, you know, there, for whatever credit cards you have, there's an app that shows you exactly how much debt you're in. You just keep adding it and adding it and adding it every single time you swipe that credit card. And because it typically has a low interest rate at the start, like 0%, especially if you're past the beginner stage and you've been using credit cards a while, people can get comfortable with that. So credit cards are good in the sense of they have financial incentive, right? They have a way to build up credit so that you can have more buying power and more negotiating power later, right? They have those benefits and you can totally get free flights, free hotels, you can get gift cards just for spending money that you would already be spending anyways, just in a more smart fashion. Those are the pros of owning a credit card. And of course, credit cards can be very bad if they're left in the wrong hands. If they're left in the hands of somebody who's irresponsible, you know, they, they might be making decent money and they might feel like, well, I'm going to splurge and live kind of a bougie lifestyle and live like this lavish lifestyle where they're having the nice cars and the nice clothes and the nice shoes. I'm just going to put it on my credit card. Yep, put it on my tab. Do this, do that. And then you wonder why you're in so much debt. Don't be that person. There's rules associated with money that everyone should follow. And I'm not going to go over all of them because there's a lot of them. But one that I really want to bring home in this specific video is if you can't afford it, don't buy it with your cash or with your credit card because you're going to pay either now or later. But you're going to pay. And if you have to pay later, you're going to have to pay even more. And what do I mean by if you can't afford something? If you can't buy more than one of them, you probably can't afford it. If it has to go on discount for you to buy it, you probably can't afford it. If you don't have enough cash, so you put it on your credit card, you can't afford it. If you buying that affects something else in your life monetarily, then guess what? You can't afford it. And the last thing I want to really bring home is that with anything financial, with anything don't just listen to what everyone else has to say because I'm sure a lot of people around the world are like, oh, credit cards are bad, I'm not going to touch them. And some just swear by them and some of them just are the opposite. But don't let somebody else's opinion of credit cards influence you. My experience with credit cards have been a positive one. They've built my credit up. I've been able to do certain things. It's been very, very, very nice. You have to leverage these things very intelligently. It's just like with anything else in life. People say certain foods are good and bad. Some people say that college is good and bad. I mean, you have to know for yourself and you have to do your own research and you have to do some, you have to have some type of experience in it. You just do. I mean, I can give advice all day, other YouTubers and other bloggers or whatever the case is, other articles online can tell you what some very highly opinionated people think about this, but what do you think about it? Think for yourself. That is the biggest advice I can give you in all of finances and especially credit cards. Think for yourself. If you don't if you don't believe what this one person says about credit cards, question it. Challenge it. Be that person who wants to have answers. Do your own research about different credit cards. Do your own research about what are the best credit cards to get for beginners and why. Think about how it'll help you in the future because everyone doesn't have the same exact financial situation and credit cards would benefit some people whereas it would hurt other people and that's the bottom line thank you so much for watching this video guys i'm reggie bryant hit the subscribe button and the like button if you liked this video and there's many 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 more to come this channel is all about personal finance so that you can control you control your finances and control your life and change your life because the biggest hindrance for majority of people in the world is finances. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.